Hi there. Now in this question, we're given this diagram here, which shows the curves of y equals the log in base 2 of x, and y equals the log in base 2 of x minus 3. And what we've got to do first of all is describe the geometrical transformation that transforms the curve y equals the log in base 2 of x to the curve y equals the log in base 2 of x minus 3. So if you'd like to have a go at that, just give you a moment to pause the video. And when you're ready, come back and you can check your solution against mine. OK, so what did you come up with for part one if you had a go? Well, what's happened is that I've replaced the x with x minus 3. And this is, when it comes to transformations of functions, f of all of x minus 3, which causes any graph to be translated. So this is a translation. And we need to say how much it's been translated by. Well, it moves any graph three units to the right, parallel to the x-axis. So I'm going to say a translation and give the vector, which is 3, 0. You could say three units to the right, parallel to the x-axis. I'm sure that would do. OK, well, that's the first part. Now, in the second part, we're told that the curve y equals the log in base 2 of x passes through the point with coordinates a3. And we've got to state the value of a. So again, if you'd like to try this, just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. So for part two then, OK, what's the value of a going to be? Well, it says state the value of a for one mark here. Um, I'm going to just do a little bit of working, though. What I know is that when x equals a, y must be equal to 3. So I'm just going to put 3 equals the log in base 2 of a. So if I anti-log both sides, in other words, a is going to be equal to the base, which is 2, raised to this power 3, 2 cubed. So therefore, 2 cubed is 8. OK, so A equals 8. Right, well, that's the first two parts done. We'll just border that off. And we move into part 3 now. I'll read it out to you, and you might like to try it. So. We've got here the curve y equals the log in base 2 of x minus 3 passes through the point with coordinates b and 1.8. And we've got to find the value of b, giving the answer correct to three significant figures. So again, just give you a few moments to pause the video if you want to have a go. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So for this one, all we've got to do is let x equal b and y equal 1.8. So if we do that, we've got 1.8 equals the log in base 2 of b minus 3. And to do this, we anti-log again, just like we did down here. And we therefore have that b minus 3 must be equal to the base, which is 2, to the power 1.8. And then I'm going to add 3 to both sides to get b. So therefore b will equal 2 to the power 1.8 plus the 3. And if you work this out in your calculator, you should find you get 6.482 and so on. And we're asked to round this to three significant figures. So if we round that to three significant figures, it's going to be 6.4823SF for short. OK. Right, we'll border this one off. And we're on to the next part now, part four. So what happens in part four? Well. We're told that the point P lies on y equals the log in base 2 of x and has an x-coordinate of c. The point Q lies on y equals the log in base 2 of x minus 3 and also has an x-coordinate of c. Given that the distance PQ is 4 units, find the exact value of c. So 
I'll give you a moment just to pause the video if you want to have a go at this one. Okay, welcome back then. Let's see how you got on. Well, what I'm going to do is we'll just put this point P on the curve. Now, this is the curve of y equals the log in base 2 of x, and this is the curve after a translation of 3 units to the right of the curve. And we get y equals log in base 2 of x minus 3 for this one. So the point P is this one then. Now, the point Q has the same x-coordinate as P does, yet it's on this curve. So if it has the same x-coordinate, it must be directly below it. Okay, And its x-coordinate here, for both of them, is C. So we'll just label this point here as Q. And we're told that the distance between these two points is 4 units. So that must mean the difference in the y values is 4. So I can set up an equation where we substitute x equals to c into both of these equations, subtract them from one another, and that difference should be 4. So that's where we go with this one. We'll take the point p first of all, because it's got the greatest y value, so we just need to substitute c into here. So we've got the log in base 2 of c, okay, minus, and then we just put the x value of c into this equation, which will give us the corresponding y coordinate of q. So that would be minus the log in base 2 of c minus 3. And that difference is equal to 4, the difference in the y values. So it's just a question now of just solving this equation. Now, in this log equation, we've got two terms that involve logs. And if you've watched my tutorials in the past, you'll know that we need to reduce any log equations down to two terms. And we can do this quite easily by grouping together these two terms by using the fact that there's a difference here, and we can apply the division rule. That is, this is exactly the same as the log in base 2 of c divided by c minus 3. And this will equal 4. So if we anti-log this, we therefore have that c over c minus 3 must be equal to 2 to the power 4. 2 to the power 4 is 16. So I just need to multiply both sides by c minus 3. So you've got c equals 16 multiplied by c minus 3. And if I expand the bracket, we therefore have c equals 16c minus 48. So it's just a question now of just finishing this equation off. And what have we got? Well, if I take c from both sides and add 48, I've got 15c equals 48. And if I divide both sides by 15, c equals 48 divided by 15. And I can now divide top and bottom by 3. So therefore, we end up with the exact answer for c, and that is 16 over 5, 16 fifths. All right.